All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I have a very special guest on the call today. We have Miss Melissa Horn, hailing from the Sunshine State. Bring us some of that Florida sunshine. <laughs> Welcome to the call, Melissa. Thank you so much for having me, Greg. I'm, I'm honored to be here. You got it. Uh, and I'm really happy because Melissa actually just got good friends of mine in contract on a property in Florida. So that's definitely something to celebrate. Yes. Yes, they got a beautiful property. Um, we're very, very excited. And now we're just going to move them on to the closing table. Awesome. So Melissa's got quite an interesting background, guys. Uh, she hails from Queens, New York. She made sure that I knew it was Queens. She never left Queens. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, she managed uh, the Comedy Cellar, which is really awesome and has some great experiences and stories from that. Uh, she since moved down to Florida uh, mom of two awesome kids, one named Nicholas. So he's really awesome in my book. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really excited to have you here. And, uh, Melissa, I'd love to jump in, learn more about your background. What got you from, uh, New York down to Florida? Let's talk a little bit about those experiences. I know you're also the valedictorian of the class. So you're definitely a high achiever, but let's learn a little bit more about you and how you got to where you are today. So, yeah, thank you so much. Well, Timmy, my husband, has a friend that lives in this area. Melbourne is like the best kept secret of Central Florida. So we are a long county that there's no urban center. So the closest urban center is Orlando. I'm a city kid. We would come down here um, to visit his friends for Easter. And his friends, obviously from New York too, would always be like, when are you guys moving down here? When are you guys moving down here? And I'm like, I'm never moving down here. <laughs> and, and Timmy would be like, well, this isn't even real Florida. Like the, there's no, po there's a lot of oak trees here, believe it or not. Okay. Like, there's no, there's no palm trees. He's used to, and, and you know, the mini New York is like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Boy, yeah. Beach, right? They love so South Florida. Yeah. So we're like three hours north of that. And Timmy's like, yeah, I don't know if I want to move here either because this is not like the Florida I think about. Well, needless to say, he got, he got, a job interview, an impromptu job interview at Easter dinner from an upper executive at Lennar. Wow. Because that's where his, his friend worked. And they offered him a job the day after Easter. And that was the year Easter was late. Like it was late in April. It uh -huh. was very late. Uh, or it was unusually late. So 2017 or 2016. And um, they offered him the position, but he had to be here by June 3rd, which only oh, gave wow. a month to get out. And I was a real estate agent in New York. So I had, you know, closing times a lot longer in New York. I had closings from May until December at that point. And um, he's like, yeah, I want to take it. And he had a demolition company at the time in New York. And I was like, you know what, if this means you're going to sell all the trucks and we don't have to go through another winter with those God awful trucks, um, I'll go to the moon. Sign you <laughs> up. Yeah. So, so we came and it was, best move we've ever made the best move even my older son like that was the hardest part he was 11 at the time so it was just starting junior high school and you know getting with getting comfortable with his friends because we'd only been in that area for mm -hmm. a couple of years so Nick was always the new kid and he's not as he's not as outgoing as me so it wasn't he didn't like it and the promise for him was as long as you don't move me from junior high school until I'm done with high school I'll go and the first year he's like, mom, this is the best move you ever made. Like, I'm never leaving here. Like, we can never leave here. And everybody thrived when we got yeah, here. Yeah, I'm sure it's the quality of life. And uh, m my wife and I will be on the journey soon. I know we will. But I'm sure even just the, the change, right, from dealing with the snow and the winters and everything, that must have been a, a great uh, different life for them, especially in the winter. It's definitely like sports all year round. Um, they started riding, even my little guy, they ride dirt bikes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like there's tracks and like a whole subcoach or a motocross, um, which they would have never had that opportunity anymore. That's awesome. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about your uh, your stint with the Comedy Cellar. I know before we started recording, you know, you dropped a couple of big names. And I'm sure that that was really impactful on your journey, especially your journey be to become an entrepreneur. So talk to me a little bit about how you got involved in that and uh, really what did that do for you and how did that impact you as a person? Comedy Cellar is my happy place. 
Um, I consider that my home. I move so much. So that'll always be my first stop when I go to New York. At the time I was there, the owner's name was Manny Dorman. He passed while I was living there. Um, while I was still working there, I'm sorry. And his son, Noam, still owns the, 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 well, they've opened a million of them now. I think there's a comedy salon in Las Vegas now. Oh, wow. Nope. Yeah. Um, and at the time I was there, Noam owned Cafe Wa, which is right next door. So we all kind of, you know, that was, that was our subculture. Just, yeah. That, that was the, that was your deal. Yeah, that was our <laughs> deal. So the way I got the job because, um, I needed to move back home at my mom's house. I was 21 years old and she told me I couldn't come because I didn't have a job. And uh, I had like odd jobs, you know, I was like a club promoter and stuff like that. And she's like, you have, you could stay for two weeks and you can get an apartment or you have to have like a real job. Wow. Oh my God. So I put together a bunch of, you know, I made up a resume or whatever I did. I had very little serving and bartending experience. Well, I was always a bus girl or mm -hmm. you know, whatever. So I, I <laughs> went in there and it was the last place I went into after a whole day of dropping off my resume and getting rejected. And, and I should have known that day I walked in, like there was just craziness already. Charlie Chaplin played on the screen and they have these chalk tables and everyone behind the bar is yelling and this, Lady Sylvia comes out and she's like, do you have any restrictions on your time? And I'm like, um, no. She's like, do you have any, I was very, I'm sure I'm not what you're supposed to ask. Do you have any kids? Do you have any, what responsibilities do you have? Because you need to be able to come in here or call in dead. Oh, like, wow. <laughs> just like, I'll take it. She's like, all right. She goes, can you be here tomorrow morning? And I was like, I'll take it. And wow. I'm like, and I, and I, my mom let me stay. Of course, that's a whole nother story, but I wound up taking over my mom's apartment and she moved out. Oh, that's crazy. And yeah. And then I was there for almost 10 years after that. And, um, I came up with, yeah, a lot of really great comedians and I learned so much, especially from Manny. The best thing about the comedy seller for me was the, how much everybody loved each other. Um, and we were all kind of in this weird part of our life that were lost and just knew that we were all really special. And we were those kids that had all this potential and nobody knew what to do with it. Everybody um, was just in transition, transition. Yeah. And, and the whole kitchen, this is especially for the times that we're going through right now. The whole kitchen is Palestinian and the owners were Israeli. Wow. And the amount of love that they had for each other. Table 21 was in the back. And that's where they would debate all of world issues and politics and the comedians and the guys in the kitchen. And Manny would go to Barnes and Noble to buy every book to support his, his argument if he was not winning. And he, um, he was probably one of the smartest men I've ever met. That's incredible. I'm sure that had a huge impact on you. Yeah. I can, I can tell just from the look in your face so yeah. when we were talking about it. That's awesome. Yeah, I loved him. He, he, I gave him a hard time. <laughs> yeah. Me. So I'm sure it was tough to walk away from that too. But, you know, there comes a time where you must move on, right? Yes, 100%. But I'll always go back. All right. So let, let's uh, fast forward and let's talk about you becoming the valedictorian of your college at, you said 35, right? Can you tell everybody the reason why you wanted to become the valedictorian? Because I went to the City University of New York College of Staten Island and there were 12,000 kids or people in each graduating class. And because the class was so big, they wouldn't say your name at graduation. They just made you stand up as a department. And I said, I am not doing this sugar um, unless they're going to say my name. What? So um, <laughs> I am going to get straight A's. And they are going to say my name at graduation because I didn't work this hard or I'm not going to work this hard unless somebody's going to give me the recognition. So I, in fact, became valedictorian. What a story. What a story. What did that feel like on that day, Melissa? Bring us back to that day. So do you remember? Do you remember? I forgot what movie it was. Oh, my God. And here I am. It was the reference that it's funny that you asked that because I went to the college the day before 
to pick up something and how to do something. And they had the whole graduation stage set up and like all the chairs out. And I had never been on campus over the last four years when they were getting that set up. And the College of Staten Island has these really cool big loops. It looks like a real campus for being in the city. Uh And these big car loops that could drive around and this big walkway that goes through it. And, and I went up on the stage and I looked at all the chairs and I was like, holy shit. I have seen all the times, yeah. but I'm like, yeah. like, I'm going to talk in front of 5,000 people tomorrow. <laughs> you asked for this. Um, and, and I was talking to my dad because, you know, my dad passed in the middle of that. Um, I started school in 2006 and I graduated June, 2011. And my dad passed in the middle in 2000. Oh, wow. And he was my biggest cheerleader, my biggest cheerleader. In fact, he was the one who told me not to get disappointed if they didn't pick me to be valedictorian because I was 35 years old. There were 12,000 people in the class and a lot of them were young. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but I did it. And, and I was like, this reminds me of some crazy John Hughes 80s movies. I think it was 16 Candles where the, where the hunk comes in on a car. Uh-huh. And she's like doing something I'm like this would be so great if like you know somebody who i haven't seen in years comes like driving up right now and be like look what there you are (laughs) yeah (laughs) so it was a pivotal moment for me to to know that i could do anything i wanted to do that's also when i got introduced with like being a you know vision and and the secret had come out right around that time and i wrote a check like they gave you these secret yeah, checks. Yeah. I wrote a check probably three years before and I put it on a board that I looked at because I wanted to go to law school. So I put all this stuff for law school up there. And I think like a year later, I added up all the, the money I've gotten from scholarships and it was within like $500 of that check. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we might need to do like a part one and part two. There's a lot of different, I can feel the energy and like, there's a lot of different ways that we could go with this, but that is, that's incredible. Cause yeah. obviously like, well, you don't know this yet about me, but like, you know, obviously we're connected with Shaddy and uh, really big in the manifestation and what you attract, you become. And that, that's incredible. Yeah, no. And it was, it really, it really was incredible like i was flip- like it was goosebumpy because i i believed it but i didn't believe it yet mm-hmm. you know like i didn't practice the way that i'm practicing now um and it took it took this last year for my mindset to really catch up with my heart if that makes mm-hmm. sense it and, does. To, and to to know like that valedictorian, what I what I did when I put my mind to it and I had the vision board, even though I wasn't invoking everything that I know now about manifestation, I did it. I did something that was so massively incredible that so many people would have thought it was impossible. And I believed it wholeheartedly. I was a single mom with a one-year-old baby, 30, 31 years old when I started, did nothing more than, well, I don't want to say it was very it was special to me, but I was a bartender. Mm-hmm. When I would run into people, I went into elementary school and I was always in Queens. So I'd run into, and I went to every school in Queens because I moved every three years. Mm-hmm. And I'd run into people and they were lawyers and they were doctors and they had kids and they were married. And what do you do, Melissa? I'm a bartender downtown. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like I, there's nothing bad about it, but I was always, you know, my dad was always like, you know, you need to get A's and go to Harvard and, you know, I was, I felt like I was a disappointment to where I was supposed to have gone at all that time in my life. And then doing that was like, oh, oh God, like I, I did this. Yeah. And it didn't come back until recently. Like if I could do that, I could do this. Like there's, yeah, no it's, it's funny you say it. I just had a similar experience with, uh, with running my first triathlon. And the reason why I always wanted to do that was, I would read uh, like men's health magazine and fitness like all throughout my twenties, and there was uh, there was always this Nautica uh, Nautica Malibu triathlon, right? And I would always say that I'm going to do a triathlon. I should have done it in like my early thirties, because. <laughs> but anyway, I decided to do it like right after I turned forty, right? And I had a similar experience after 
when I completed that, because I had dealt with some like real crazy back issues and spasms and all this craziness, uh, like the year before, and then I completed it, and I'm like, whoa, I'm like, what the hell else can I do? <laughs> yeah, no, that's a huge feat because, you know, I'm over 40 and yeah, yeah it, it doesn't feel the same. And then yeah. I, I couldn't, I don't think that I could. I don't want to say I couldn't do it. You but you, you can do I it. I was I was getting smoked by people in their seventies. So you you oh can definitely do it. Well, that's yeah. that's incredible for you too. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. So all right, let's uh, let's talk some real estate. So let's do it. Um, I know you obviously you chose a different path besides becoming an attorney. You decided to get into real estate. So then you made the big transition, made the big move down to Florida. Let's talk about your real estate business. So. Um, the reason why I just caught my attention, I said, I want to get Melissa on the podcast. I saw the video that went out about your 13 deals closed in 13 weeks. Um, you've closed a lot of transactions, like you were doing 50, 60 deals a year, which is a lot of deals to do as a solo producer. Talk to me about that challenge. And like, who did you have to become in order to do the activities necessary to put those kind of numbers on the board? I had to, I had to become me. I had to remember who Melissa was. Um, and, and just believe I got very lucky with when I got my real estate license, I did absolutely nothing with it for that whole first year. Cause I most thought, people I, don't I, yeah. <laughs> I, I could figure it out. I had a great mentor in New York, Vinnie Martino at the time we were with Douglas Elliman. Um, he, he really, and, he, and he's rough around the edges like me. So I, I really took to that. That was, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a save the world type of person. So I don't want to disappoint anybody. And he saw this incredible talent in me and that he saw this incredible, incredible talent with me. I couldn't disappoint him. And he gave me the tools that I can come to a new market in Florida and thrive. The first year in Florida was very tough for me. I'm sure. And um, for a lot, a lot of personal stuff went on at the same time. I really wasn't ready to come here. And I wasn't ready to give up New York. I didn't know what the heck was going on here with the market. Yeah. Um, and so the first year here was tough. So I went to work with the builder. And, and you know what? I did pretty incredible with that too. I got my broker's license in Florida and I was just mm -hmm. a salesperson in, in New York. And I was able to negotiate up to be the broker of record for a small builder, which gave me a year, a year at the salary that I wanted to learn the market, to learn construction, to have a brokerage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean, um, and, and then, and then I moved on after that because that wasn't, it wasn't where my passion was. Uh, there wasn't enough to sell, at, you know, because I had to concentrate on the development. I really couldn't concentrate on resale, mm -hmm. which is where I wanted to be. And then I went back, but I took the tools from what I learned that year and everything that I learned from Vinny in New York. And I was able to to start building my marketing and my presence. And I partnered with another agent here. And in 2019, so that's from 2017 to 2019. So okay. You know, a big break mm -hmm. um, in momentum for what I was doing in New York. Mm -hmm. And um, the second half of 2019, I killed it, and and I wasn't sure. But again, it was that I'm not going to disappoint this person, this other agent that believed in me enough to say, "Hey, let's let's see what let's see what you can do." Um, and this is what I expect of you, and and he didn't think I could do it. Wow. That got me a little bit more. So, and then, so I think that's kind of what fuels you a little bit, right? Yeah. Like I'll show them. Yeah, for sure. It definitely does. But you know who I wind up showing? I show me. Yeah, that's true. And, and that's, and that's who I needed to become. Mm -hmm. So that's who I needed to become. There's still a lot more uh, that I need to, Still, there's, you're evolving, right? That's what we do. We have every to single evolve. day is a new day. Uh, every single day, you're growing, you're you're transforming, you're becoming a new, better version of yourself. Absolutely. Yes, and that's what I write in my journal every morning. I do follow Chatty's, mm -hmm. you know, happiness. One, what made you happy in the last twenty four hours? Two gratitudes for yep. the day. Your affirmations, and um, 
that's always one of them. Like, who, who are you, Melissa? And who are you going to be today? Who, what's your intention of who you're going to be? And it makes a huge difference to say that. Like, well, well, today I'm, I'm going to try not to worry. Today I'm going to try to not leave stuff on my plate that I know should come off my plate. <laughs> you know? That's a big challenge that, that I have. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's how are you going to emotionally navigate the day? And I think, especially in this current market that we're in, I mean, if you don't control your emotions or at least actively work to manage your emotions, your emotions are going to control you. And that's like a long, dark road that you could go down by yourself, especially if you don't come up and ask for help. Uh, something else I wrote down just from when we talked about before we started recording um, about what you mentioned about your son is that something wonderful is going to happen today. And I think that's something that I'm going to embody myself because I, I recently shared this on a, a group call that I was on and like just about like the impulse of waking up, feeling like you're already behind or looking at the schedule to see what's coming up for the day, starting to stress. And I realized like that's not healthy, right? That is not that is not a good way to start the day. And I think I'm gonna add that to my my morning mantras and my morning routine because I think that's a great way to to kind of embody the direction the day is gonna go. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, you're so welcome. It was shared with me, so you have to share it with somebody too. We're gonna pay it forward. Yep. All right, so thirteen deals in thirteen weeks, right? Talk to people about the level of activity that you had to do to hit that, because I want everybody, especially the real estate agents and the producers and here to listen to this, because 95% of agents cannot do this or will not do this level of activity. It's hard. It's hard. Um, How many contacts a day? 30 contacts a day. 30 Ooh. contacts a day. And I have I call through my CRM on a single line dial. So wow. 30 contacts takes me approximately three and a half to four hours, um, which is a good chunk of the day, especially as a solo agent. When I have deals going on and follow ups to do and inspections and appraisals and all the other crap that we have to do. Yep. So um, I really had to have a laser focus that I that I that I didn't believe I could have. <laughs> and, and yeah. I had to believe it because you can't say, I don't believe it. I can't do it. You can't even, can't's not a word. Can't just take it and throw it away. Yep. You're, you're done the second you say can't. Um, and I, lucky for me, I don't say can't. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I'm never. That's another ninja, ninja tip. <laughs> yes. And I, and I will not, I, I won't look like a fool. And I committed to doing it. Um, it was not easy. And when you're in it, I'll tell you what I learned that when you're in it and you get out of your head and you're just having conversations and you're not worried about a script and you're not worried about the time and you're not worried, you're just, you know, I'm just having conversations with these people and trying to figure out how I can help them. The time, the time goes faster. Where I came into trouble was when I was getting distracted. The phone's ringing. Yeah. This one wants to know where this is and this one. And I, you're getting panicky. Yeah. Like I, I would just go for a walk or, you know, grab a protein drink or something to, and be like, I have to do this. And sometimes, you know, it would be like, I'd be at 22 contacts and it would be like almost one o'clock and I have to go. You got to finish. Yeah. I would, there was a couple of days that, I was in Walmart. Like I had to go shop. Like I had to feed my kids, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, let me grab some business cards from the from the car. And I'm like, all I have to do is have a conversation about real estate. All wow. I have to do is have a conversation about real estate. So I did get a couple of contacts from Walmart. Um, there was I'm trying. There was some other creative things that I did. Baseball game. I'm not. I'm. I haven't been the person that talks to individuals like yeah, we'll capitalize on that yeah, yeah. yeah i'm like, the same way i can do a much better job at that yeah i i don't like to just wear my name tag everywhere i go yeah and, you know what do you know about the market i feel like it's so cheesy and so uh -huh. silly, you know so what i did learn is that it's easy to talk about real estate if you just want to talk to a person and be friendly yeah right? then and that that's it like i remember there was one lady one of the ladies in walmart she was an older lady 
And she, I think she was trying to get her water or something. It was something heavy. She was trying to get out. I'm like, Hey, you want me to help you? And then we just started talking. And, and then I don't even remember how I cleverly slipped it in be like, Oh man, I left something at the office. I got, Oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm a real estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's always an angle somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it that was, that was a really way I, I widened my horizon, I guess to say. Um, it was not easy. 30 contacts is very, very hard. But 30 contacts when your head's not in it and you're not focused is not going to get you the same results un un until you're laser focused and you know that you you have to do it. And the other thing that changed, if you're concentrating on the contacts, you're not getting the appointments. There you go. Yeah, you're not focused on the conversation. You're yeah. just worried about clicking the little clicker. Yeah. <laughs> so that was early in the first in the first part of the 90 days I realized that um and then recently I'm realizing it now when and that's the best part of learning right because you can stop it you can you, once you once you have the awareness you you have the strength and the tool to be better so that's the greatest thing I learned from it is the self awareness of of what I can do and how I have to do it to be successful yeah, and I think that this is something a lot of people can take away from this that are resisting, like breaking out of their comfort zone. I talk to so many people and I know that they're not doing the level of activity that it takes right now to win, right? But it's that's that's to me, it's self imposed pain, right? Like mm -hmm. that's like you're like punching yourself in the face when all you have to do is like go to the Walmart, like you said, or go and talk to people. Or like whatever is going to work for you. And maybe it is the dialer. Maybe it is networking, door knocking. But the moral to the story is like you have to do something or nothing is going to change. So that's like 90 days times 30. That's like almost 3,000 contacts. That is impressive to say the least. And it paid off. It paid off. There were 13 deals that came out of that. And how much more business is coming in the future, do you think, as a result of that level of activity? Well, that, you know, it could, it depends on what I do with it. It really does. I have, there are leads that I'm still following up with. There are, you know, I've, I've become, over the last couple of years, that was something that changed in my career, like evolved in my career from New York to Florida. I've learned to live in my CRM. I've spent a ton of time making and developing automations so that, you know, I don't forget who I have to call and, and, and follow up with, you know, like you have your ABs and I'm sure everybody of knows, course, yeah. find, find the, the lists that work for you mm -hmm. and work the list because then you're not thinking there was so much time in my career. I'm like, who do I have to call? Who do I have to chase? And I was always on yep. that okay, my pipeline's full. Let's, let's get all these people in houses and get their houses sold. Oh shit. I have nothing. Yep. The, roller, then, the never ending roller coaster. And then, and then go through it again. What I've built in my CRM makes that less likely to happen. And that's just the people I called. Now the people that I've closed or the people that are still pending to close from that, their referrals are limitless. Yeah. As long as I keep loving on them. That's so, true. So I, I could, I could say this, that I've definitely gotten at least another year of business out of those 13 deals. That's incredible. And, and, and all you did was commit to taking action. And now you don't have to live in stress. And I yeah. know the, the conversation that we had was like, now you're thinking about how do I level up? How do I start buying property? How do I do this? And it's just because you took action. And whereas a lot of people that are avoiding taking that action are more worried about the election, the war, the interest rates. Like when I tell people this all the time, like you don't have to, of course, you want to be cognizant of what's happening, right? But you don't have to worry about any of that garbage affecting your business because it's just a distraction from getting you to your goals. And I know you have a really big why and you have a really big desire to win as you illustrated in the valid, uh, valedictorian. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. well, I'm glad you reminded me of that because I feel you made me feel really energy energized. Like I think I'm gonna put like a picture. I think I have it. Let's I see. would, yeah. Wait, it's back there. I need to put it where I can see it. That's me in the speech. So, <laughs> so you just reminded me. I need to blow up the picture at at the finish line with my son at the triathlon, 
and him running over the finish line with me. So that that's a great reminder. You have to do it. And I need to put that where I can see it. I was like, and I knew I brought this in my new office. So I thought I would bring it over here. But it needs to, you need, yes, put that on your wall. We need to see those things all the time. It needs to be a constant reminder because, you know, we're human. And, and we, I don't know, I don't want to say everybody. Sometimes you have to remind yourself of your worth so that, so that you just know you're great every day and you feel good. So look, Melissa, we are going to do it part two of this if you're cool, <laughs> because I know that we have a hard stop at two o'clock, but there's a lot more that I want to go into about moving markets. I want to go more into discipline. I want to have you talk to the single moms out there that were going through what you were going through. So are you cool if we do a part two? I would love to do that. And Let's do a part two. And the single moms thing, a hundred all of it, a hundred percent. But Every single mom out there, there is nothing you can't do. Nothing. Nothing. Your kids are fine. And my Nick is the strongest man. And I thought that I failed him. So I did something right. So much more than I ever knew. And now I know it because I let go of the guilt. But don't wait until your kids are 18. Just do what you want. <laughs> let go of the guilt now. <laughs> All right. So look, in the meantime, uh, before part two comes out, because now we have to schedule part two. How can people get in touch with you for all those Florida referrals? Give me a call or shoot me a text, 321-831-5085. That's my personal cell and the fastest way to get in touch with me. Awesome. Thank you so much uh, for what you shared. And I'm really looking forward to the sequel. Me too. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Okay. Bye.